In medicine, there's always certain diagnosis that should be kind of a reflex. What do I mean by that? So if someone comes in with a fever and a new heart murmur, what do you think about? That's right, like endocarditis. endocarditis. If someone comes in with a fever and they have a headache, what should kind of jump to mind a little bit? Yeah, meningitis. meningitis. Now, how about this one? Someone has cirrhosis, now that stinks, and they have fluid in their peritoneum, we call that ascites, and they have a fever. So ascites and fever, what must you rule out? That's right, what are those three letters? S, B, P. What does that stand for? Spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Now, when we wanna use this terminology, it really gets niched to what? People who have portal hypertension who are, cirros who are cirrhotics. So we could take a little step back and just say, anytime there's fluid in the peritoneal space, you really wanna know why is the fluid there? And one of the most common things that you need to calculate, whether you're in the hospital or if you're gonna be taking the board exam, is something called the SAG, S-A-A-G. And that's a serum ascites albumin gradient. And of course, there is some memorizing involved. What's the cutoff? Is the SAG uh, greater than 1.1 or less than 1.1? And how do you get this number? Well, you take the serum albumin and you subtract that from the ascites albumin. If it's greater than 1.1, hey, it's from things like portal hypertension or heart failure. If it's less than 1.1, it could be horrible things like, you know, peritoneal carcinomatosis or peritoneal tuberculosis. Now, I'm not really a big fan of memorizing. So why is the SAG greater than 1.1 in someone who has cirrhosis? The way I think about it is this. You have your serum albumin and the normal value is around four. But if you're a cirrhotic, you're not making what? Proteins. So the acidic proteins can be very what? Low. So four minus a super low number is definitely gonna be greater than 1.1. Now, if you talk about someone who has, unfortunately, cancer in the peritoneum, like peritoneal carcinomatosis, well, you take a serum albumin, and there's gonna be a lot of nasty protein in there. So if you take four minus a lot and a lot of protein, it's gotta be a low value. And this is a good way to figure out what's going on without memorizing those cutoff values of 1.1. Now, someone's gonna ask me this. Dr. Raj, I'm gonna rewind this video, and you said that if the SAG is greater than 1.1, it could be portal hypertension or CHF. Well, how do you determine which is which? You, you guys are good, you're putting me on my spot over here. So let me give you one more pearl. So the way you determine that beyond the history and physical examination, just looking at the fluid characteristics, is you gotta look at the total acidic protein in the fluid. So how much protein is going to be in that acidic fluid? If that protein level is greater than 2.5, you know what? It's going to be from what? CHF. So how do I keep that in the back of my mind and my memory? Well, when you have heart failure, that has nothing to do with making proteins. So the total amount of proteins in the acidic fluid should be high. And if it's greater than 2.5 and the SAG is greater than 1.1, it's going to be from what? CHF. So I didn't forget what this talk is about. It's about SBP. So when we think about spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, what are, well, hmm, how do you make the diagnosis? Well, after you uh, determine the SAG is greater than 1.1, greater than 250 PMNs in the acidic fluid tells you that it's gonna be SBP. And of course, you wanna send that fluid to culture. You wanna get those sensitivities. And on that note, what are the top three bugs in order of incidence that causes SVP. Number one has to be what? You got it. My most common gram negative rod in probably the GI system, which is what? E. coli. Number two has to be Klebsiella pneumonia. Number three has to be what? Strep pneumo. And when we talk about therapy, you gotta think about antibiotics. When I think about treatment, first line therapy antibiotic wise for SVP is what? Third generation cephalosporin. Things like ceftriaxone. When we think about prophylaxis for SBP, which we do in certain individuals, like cirrhotics who come in with a variceal bleed, what category of drug do we use for prophylaxis? Yeah, quinolones. And of course, after we uh, start treating for SBP, we love to give these patients what? Albumin. Why? Is because they're cirrhotics, and we want to prevent them from going to what? 
hepatorenal syndrome. Wow, I can't even count the amount of pearls on this one today. But you know what? I want you to go check out my website. We have huge videos on cirrhosis, which is so important for the boards. Hey, listen to my podcast. And you know, I guarantee you, I'm gonna see you soon with some more pearls. Oh,